All right, so it's kind of funny that um, that the the first Professor Postal video um, and this one are both in my S199 on the EU server. Um, but this is not unique situation to EU by any means. Um, really need to teach people how to use the F keys. So let's go ahead and do that. The battle was the battle. I mean, it was nothing. Uh, most of the battles I've had on EU have been pretty... Um, we'll just say middling like this. I haven't really had a whole lot of, um, you know, ridiculous, you know, 20,000 uh, personal points games on the EU. Uh, but what I want to go and look into detail on is the freaking F keys. So <laughs> what are these F keys that you speak of? Um, well, they're Basically, they're going to be able to, hello, they're going to be able to tell you where your, and help your bots and tell your, um, your friendlies what and where they can be most effective. So they're down here in the chat. I guess I could have just clicked on chat. Um, I didn't even, don't even know team voice. I guess that makes sense-ish. Um, the big ones that I use a lot are going to be F2. So that's to attack or defend a ground target. That you can point when you're pointing your reticle at um, directly at a sector. Um, you hit F2 and you'll start sending bots there. Um, F3 I don't typically use. If I need support, I actually hit F7. Um, and that's because I've got somebody on my butt and I need somebody to clear my tail. Um, so I'll utilize F7 so that way um, if I'm being attacked by a human, heck, if I'm being attacked by a bot, I'll hit F7 um, and once I notice that I've got um, support behind me, I will start going in kind of a straight line, like not completely straight because then I can get killed easily, but I'll go in a straight enough line and I'll be wiggling um, to allow my enemy to go in a straight line to allow my friendly to get behind them and kill them. F7 is a big deal, F2 is a big deal. Um, last but not least that I use quite a bit is F4. F4 is utilized like F2, where you point the reticle directly at the um, where you want it to be, but this in this instance it has to be pointed directly at an aircraft. You can either point it at an enemy aircraft if you want everybody to attack them, or you can point it at a friendly aircraft if you want everybody to defend them. I utilize it more for attack than defend, mainly just because there's more things to attack than there are to defend. Um, but, so let's say I'm in my S199, and there's a specialized Spitfire 5 on the enemy team, um, and we're all kind of inbound. I'll have everybody focus on that Spitfire 5, since I can't outmaneuver him, or I'll have him go after the ME410, whatever, whatever aircraft that I might struggle against. Um, I will have everybody attack them, and it just makes their life, the enemy's life, a hell of a lot more difficult. Um, and it makes my life easier, so I like utilizing them. Those are the main three I use. F2 is really important. Um, F7 is super important, <laughs> and F4 um, can be very, very helpful. The F5 and F6, I can't tell you last time I used F6. If it's negative, I just ignore whatever somebody's saying. Um, I will t sometimes hit F5 if it's just to communicate with uh, another human. If they're wanting you know, to go to a sector, I'll hit F5. Or if they say something in the chat, I'll hit F5. F8 I use uh, quite a bit more recently, um, just because I do want to encourage my team when they are doing a good thing, give them a good job. If they you know, save my bacon, I will hit F8. And, um, or, or if I've got time, I'll actually type in thank you. But if I don't have time, I'll hit an F8 and do a good job. Um, and you know, this is it's an, these are necessary skills, in my opinion, to move on from beyond um, from beyond mediocre at this game. Um, F2 will allow you to dictate where. Now, granted, all your all your bots are not going to go there. Don't expect like suddenly to have twelve uh, freaking planes going to one sector. Um, but it will send some planes there, and so it will just help move the um, needle, so to speak, towards a sector. 
Um, F4 is incredibly helpful. They will start, like you will have a handful of planes start going after an enemy plane or start defending an, an enemy uh, friendly plane. That can be very, very helpful. Same with F7. That literally, F7 has saved me so many times I can't even count. Um, now granted, it's not going to save you every time. If you're on five hit points, uh, don't hold your breath, right? Um, but sometimes what it can even do is after you've been killed, they've already got an enemy, you know, the, if your enemy's on you, um, you hit F7 and they start having um, a friendly attack them. Even if the enemy kills you, the friendly that was trying to defend you will still stay with that. It's not like they jump away. So there's been plenty of times where I have maybe died, but F7 was utilized to still kill the person that was um, that was coming back towards me. So to use F2 and to use F4 properly, um, you really need to be able to be you need to be able to look around. And so whatever button you have set to look around, you want to make sure that um, that you're able to do that. Um, and so, you know, make sure that you're looking around, you've, you've got that ability to kind of pivot around and um, view around you in general. That should be something that, that's a basic skill. You need to be able to look around, look behind you, look to the sides, look below you, look above you. Um, to see what enemies are where, heck, to see what friendlies are where. Yeah, the map will give you a basic um, idea of the general direction of, of these uh, other planes. But being able to pivot around and actually see exactly where um, enemies or friendlies are is incredibly helpful. So some other um, settings that I've got, I put on my C button, I have uh, weapon group two. So that is if you have um, a plane that has more than one gun type. So, I mean, a lot of American planes have just all one gun type, whether it's, you know, 650 cal machine guns, or it's, um, you know, 437 mil uh, machine gun, uh, cannons, I should say, whatever. Uh, the majority of the American planes have just one kind of set. But a lot of German planes, um, Soviet planes will have two different sets, whether, like a MiG will have two 23 millimeter cannons and a 37 millimeter cannon. Um, uh, ME410 well, has a bunch of different um, cannon groups. And so what happens is your really strong cannons will tend to overheat and your smaller machine guns will, um, will still be able to fire. And you're just holding down the trigger, not allowing your huge cannons that do all the real big damage to, um, to cool off while you're still holding down your machine gun. What you can do is you can hold down what I've got, the C button, key, C key, um, and it will fire just my, my light machine guns. It'll allow my 20 mil or 30 mil cannons to cool off. And once my 20 or 30 millimeter cannons have cooled off, or at least cooled off enough, I will let go of the C button and go back to my main trigger. Um, that will just, again, it'll allow you to continue to fire at that person, but also allow your main huge heavy cannons to cool off. Highly recommend this um, for like kind of next level stuff. Um, it's, this isn't necessarily, you need to get used to the game and how, you know, the guns in general work before you start putting weapon groups. Um, but I mean, that's my recommendation. Hell, you can make weapon groups off of, off of uh, your first battle. I don't care. Maybe it'll help you get used to that uh, sooner rather than later. Something else I've done is, um, so pitch up and pitch down. So I spoke a bunch about this in, um, in many, many battles. I have it set that, that F12 and F11 is actually on my mouse. Um, and so what I can do when I am on the my rear gunner, I can, uh, you know, on a turret, whether it's on a heavy fighter, a GA, a bomber, whatever it might be, I can pitch up and pitch down while I'm still on my turret. Normal settings will, um, will just have you go in a straight line, which obviously can, is going to be detrimental if you're near mountains. Um, but it's also detrimental just when you're trying to defend yourself. And I'm sure any of you have been flying, and if somebody's just going in a straight line, they're an easy kill, right? Or easier, anyway. And so simply by being able to pitch up or pitch down in situations, it kind of matters that your rear gunner, if um, your rear gunner only points up, then you're going to be pitching up quite a bit because you want your rear gunner to get on target. Um, but by pitching up or pitching down, you throw off 
the enemy's ability to actually hit you. Yeah, they're still going to hit you, but they're not going to 100% hit you. They're going to maybe 50% hit you, or maybe even a third um, hit you. That will give you so much more time to kill them. To, you know, if, if you need to, hit F7. You know, get uh, friendly on the enemy while you're moving around, while you're wiggling. Um, I can't tell you how many times, again, much like F7, I can't tell you how many times I've been saved because I was able to pitch up and pitch down when I was looking through my rear turret. Um, not looking where I'm going, but but being able to pitch up and pitch down and get out of the way of um, incoming fire. It's yeah, I just can't can't go into that enough. Um, obviously, I haven't changed any of the um, roles. What I have done though is added on my Q and on my E the yaw left and yaw right. Um, what that allows me to do is turn even tighter sometimes when I'm dogfighting. Now this doesn't work for all planes. Well, it works for most planes, but it definitely doesn't work for all planes. Um, the more turny of a plane that you have, the, the better it is. Obviously, there's going to be different yaw rates for all different types of planes, and so you definitely want to look at that to see if it's you know really relevant for the plane you're flying. Um, you know, Typically, the light fighters is where it's going to be um, best, but I've also used that to, again, to, to live just a little bit longer when I'm in a heavy fighter, and... Um, you know, while hopefully somebody um, kills the person that's trying to kill me. Um, something I've done, uh, this is just specific to me, um, I've changed my spacebar to lock to the nearest target. But what this allows me to do is, is especially if I'm a dog fighting, if I'm in a Spitfire, if I'm in a, a Yak or a, a Zero, um, but, I, but I use it for all my planes. Um, as soon as I've killed a plane, I hit that spacebar. And I can just do that with my thumb. Um, as soon as the as soon as the next target's ready and available, I know exactly what I need to do, whether it's to fly away or to, to keep turning. Um, it's just super quick. It's it's like more of a help than anything else. Obviously, I needed to uh, move my bombs to a different um, to a different button, which I did. It's another button on my mouse. This actually happened because. Um, I didn't want my bomb drop to be the space bar because what was happening because uh, you know I'm producing YouTube videos so I'm trying to chat with people sometimes and I'll reload in and I'll be hitting the space bar thinking that I'm typing a message when in reality I'm you know I'm not typing a message so I'm just dropping bombs and I'm really frustrated and God knows how long some of those bomb reloads are so I moved it from um, the space I moved the bomb drop from the space bar to a mouse button and then I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, spacebar is really convenient um, for locking to the nearest target. And I don't lock to the nearest target just for when I'm dogfighting. I also utilize it when I'm in a bomber or when I'm in a GA. To know exactly how close the nearest target is, is this something I need to be maneuvering uh, away from? Or is it 8,000 feet away, you know, 3,500 meters away? Um, and I can continue on my trajectory to try to flip a zone. Or is it a thousand meters away and I need to be freaking dodging like it's nobody's business? Um, and so I, I definitely lock nearest target uh, quite a bit just to help me make a decision on what my next move is, no matter what plane I'm in. And last but not least, something else I do is I've changed my level off rate. So you may have noticed sometimes my plane will be flying and it'll be flying at an angle sideways or, you know, uh, 60 degrees or something like that. And you'll just wonder, why, how, how is he just kind of flying in that kind of angle? I've changed my level off rate. I've lowered it significantly because there's going to be plenty of times, especially if you're in a light fighter or multi-role, and um, you know the majority of the time in a heavy fighter, where I, want to continue, I don't want my plane to auto-level out. So it, it can throw you off if you're dogfighting, right? And so I used to... Um, change this when I went to a bomber or a ground attack plane. I used to change it to where it would um, have a higher level off rate. I got kind of lazy. Um, you know, bombers and GAs, you typically want to have them level off because that's how they drop their bombs. They can't drop their bombs when they're sideways kind of stuff. Um, but I've just got kind of lazy of like changing my level off rate every time I hop in and out of a bomber or a GA. And so I just make them you know, use my A and D key to, to level off, right? I do have it slightly leveling me off, but, um, you know, it's, it's pretty minimal. Um, yeah, so that's just something that might help keep you at the angle that you might want to keep staying at. 
Um, sometimes I'll like preset my angle when I know that I'm gonna have to start diving and I wanna dive at a certain angle. Um, I'll kinda have myself preset to that angle. It's kinda few and far between, but I have noticed uh, an ability to dogfight easier if my plane's not trying to auto level. Um, yeah, so that's again just another another helpful hint. I suppose last but not least on the disabled keys during battle I put the alt tab key so keep in mind that this is even available if you keep accidentally hitting the window key you know your window pops up like this um, you know you I, I don't hit that so I don't have it disabled but alt tab I would I I would hit that all the freaking time and it would drive me crazy so I've disabled alt tab and it's made my life a lot nicer um, but this is also where you can like turn off the hints if you're uh, tired of seeing the hints You've played a thousand battles and you're like, I don't need to see them anymore. You can turn them off right here um, I mean, I've still got the ground proximity warning system on but I mean sometimes it's kind of kind of useless um, a You'll get you typically only get the warning like a second before you crash <laughs> um, Sometimes you even get it after you've already crashed or after you've already passed the part You know, you've already pulled up and made it and then you get the proximity warning. It's kind of useless, but I, I don't know I, it doesn't doesn't deter From anything so I haven't really touched it Alright, and so I hope that was all helpful. Um, you know, some of it is is I'd like to think a lot of that would be helpful to even new players of the game. Some of it might be just a little bit um, beyond, you know, those who just started. Um, but definitely stuff that could help intermediate um, pilots as well. They're all little things that like don't make or break the game. It's uh, you know, I. I I didn't go from like being a 50% pilot to a 67% pilot because of these changes, but it's it can be something that can definitely help in in your everyday gameplay. And it, heck, even maybe it'll kind of help um, change your mentality when it comes to the way that you're interacting with other pilots or how you're interacting with your plane. So maybe it's just kind of a jog of, of that kind of um, that kind of situation. So I hope this was helpful. But I mean, we're, we're, this wasn't really about the gameplay. This is more going to be about um, what you can do to have a more positive impact um, with your team um, and with your plane in the game uh, World of Warplanes. So, um, if you if you enjoyed this, please give me a heads up. Like, I don't want to I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time um, by by making these um, you know Professor Postal kind of videos. Um, so yeah, just. Give me a heads up in the comments down below. Share this with some of your friends if, if you found it helpful. Um, something that they can watch and might be able to help them. Or give me a heads up in the comments to say, you know, Postal, you're, you're, you know, you're wasting our time. Um, can we go see you blow crap up in your XF-90? Um, I'll, go, I'll go do that. Um, but I'd like to think this could be helpful. Whether you've been playing it for, you know, playing the game for a few weeks or a few months or a few years. Um, sometimes we don't go digging into... Um, you know additional settings. We just kind of get stuck in what what the game hands us from the beginning uh, But sometimes it's good to try to see if you can make the game, you know fit your play style fit your uh, Muscle memory and go from there Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a great day. Bye